Welcome to the Association of Schools and Colleges of Optometry podcast series. ASCO will be producing podcasts on topics pertaining to the field of optometry, being or becoming a doctor of optometry, academic optometry, and more. You can listen to our podcast through the ASCO website at www.opted.org, O-P-T-E-D.org, ASCO's YouTube channel, and iTunes. Today's topic is is optometry for me. And we welcome Michael Bacigalupi, Assistant Dean for Student Affairs at Nova Southeastern University, College of Optometry, and also a Doctor of Optometry, and Sonny Ewing, Director of Student Recruitment at the Southern College of Optometry. Dr. Bacigalupi, do you remember the moment you discovered you wanted to enter the field of optometry? My mom worked for an optometrist when I was a child growing up here in South Florida, and uh, she worked for a great optometrist named Dr. Ronaldo, who I still keep in contact with. Being in his office was always such a fun thing for me as a child and I was very proud that I pursued his profession um, when I was in college and when I was in optometry school. So would it be difficult for a student of optometry to, to shadow a doctor of optometry much like you did, doctor? I, I think they might be surprised that many optometrists would be very receptive to that. I think if you call the general physician's office, they would say, no, 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 you can't do that. You can't shadow in my office. But I think from an optometry perspective, it's a little easier for um, the optometrist to allow students to shadow in their office. Miss Sunny Ewing is the Director of Student Recruitment at the Southern College of Optometry, one of ASCO's 21 schools and colleges of optometry. Miss Ewing, what kind of student are you looking for? The key thing is that we're looking for someone who's well-rounded. Academics are obviously going to be an important part. We're looking for someone who has a good background in the sciences, but overall, to someone who's challenged themselves in undergrad with 15 or more hours per semester and, and doing well academically, too. And Dr. Bacigalupi, you wanted to weigh in on what would make a great optometry student. I always tell students who are thinking about optometry school as a profession that they need to make sure they love it. It's a difficult path to become a doctor of any sort, whether you become a dentist or an osteopathic physician or allopathic physician. It's a hard course, just like optometry. But if you have a love for it, that means you have the motivation and the determination to see it through. And I think that you'll find that most optometrists who are out there who are in practice, they do have a love for their profession. And that really um, is, you know, what inspires young people to go into it going forward. Sonny Ewing, what sort of undergraduate course of study would you recommend? Probably 60 to 70 percent of the students that enter our program have a degree, a bachelor's degree in biology, but the rest of them come from a variety of different backgrounds. As long as they're getting the prereqs and a good education, the major isn't as important as the foundation of what they're bringing in with them. So even middle schoolers or high schoolers can start thinking about this course of study? Absolutely. It's never too young to start thinking about what you want to do. We actually go to some elementary school fairs just to introduce them to the profession of optometry and taking good care of their eyes and everything at that level. Let's talk about the academic work that goes into becoming a doctor of optometry. How tough is it? Well, it's going to be very similar to any of the other health professions, um, particularly analogous to dental. Um, the first two years of optometry school are going to be made up with um, getting that basic foundation in medical sciences and in optics. You're going to be taking basic science courses like uh, human anatomy and physiology and things like that. And then also you're going to be learning the optical side of things. So you're going to be learning about geometrical and the theoretical optics. About 22 to 24 credit hours per semester um, when you first start out in optometry school. So it's pretty challenging. Um, we always tell students they really need to have very, very good time management skills and study skills before they enter optometry school. Compared to other medical fields, for you, what makes optometry stand out? There was an interesting study that was done that showed that um, an average physician spent about eight minutes with every patient that they saw during the day, but that an optometrist saw it spent at least 24 minutes with every patient that they saw. So really in developing long-term relationships, we have three times the amount of time um, in contact with our patients rather than a general physician. So having some of those people skills really does make you an effective optometrist in developing long-term patient relationships. Part of your student's education is working in clinics. Can you describe the types of cases that you've seen in clinics you've worked in? Sure, absolutely. Um, in a unique location here in South Florida. So our patients come from the Caribbean, from Central America, from South America, where they may not have had access to health care or specifically eye care in the past. So um, on a daily basis, our students will be caring for patients who maybe never had access to care, and they'll see patients who have undiagnosed glaucoma or they have diabetic eye disease, and they don't even know they have diabetes. 
we're not just asking the question, which one's better, one or two with the patient behind the machine. What we're really doing is looking at their eye health and often how that relates to their systemic health. So we often are sort of like a gatekeeper in getting patients access to the right physicians that need to take care of their general health as well. Sonny, if you could offer just one bit of advice to an undergraduate who wants to become a doctor of optometry, what would that be? If you're thinking about investing four years of, un- of uh, your academic career for a lifetime profession, you want to explore it more than just reading about it. You want to shadow, you want to talk to people that are actually in that profession. And as Mike said earlier, find your passion. And for the parents, that's the one thing too, is let your child find their passion and and helping guide them by giving them suggestions of different professions is good, but letting them find on their own by uh, shadowing and talking to those healthcare professions, if they can see themselves doing that for the rest of their lives to see if it's something that they want to do. Doctor? Also, I would suggest the students when they're in college, you know, to join a pre-optometry club at their university or college um, if they have one, because a lot of the clubs will have those resources. They'll have a list of doctors in the community that are happy to have um, potential future optometrist shadow in their offices. So they can be a great resource as well in trying to find those opportunities. You mentioned the future and future optometrist. Let's wrap it up by talking a little bit about the future of optometry. How bright is the future? I see the future being very strong myself. Being on the non-doctor side, I see a lot of the students really excited about the future of the profession because there's so many new things going on. Uh, the the healthcare reform has definitely made some impacts on the profession where you see a, a larger number of patients able to have access to vision care. So I see the future of optometry being very strong. I agree with Sunny on that. I think the future is, is quite bright. Our students are very excited and passionate about their futures. We definitely have seen a change in on optometry. Uh, it's one of the fastest evolving um, professions that I'm aware of. You know, just a hundred years ago or so, optometry was a profession that was made sort of out of jewelry stores where optometrists were the ones who learned to fashion gold around spectacle lenses to help patients see. And, you know, when I think about that short time period of a hundred years to where we are now, where our students are, you know, learning um, human anatomy on cadavers and they're learning to do injections and IVs and those types of things in their training, Um, What a dramatic growth of our profession we've seen in the past 100 years. And this medical route that optometry has taken really continues to grow. You know, residencies in optometry are still an option. Uh, Students can choose to do a one-year residency post-graduation. And about 30% of the students from our school these days are electing to do a residency because they really are focused on um, that medical model of training. So um, I think we're sort of poised to continue to grow on this path that we started 100 years ago. Dr. Michael Bacigalupi, Assistant Dean for Student Affairs at Nova Southeastern University, College of Optometry, and also a Doctor of Optometry, and Sonny Ewing, Director of Student Recruitment at the Southern College of Optometry. Thank you very much for your time and participation. And ASCO's very first podcast is Optometry for Me. Thank you very much. Thank you. For more information, you can visit www.opted.org, O-P-T-E-D.org.